Hello fellow humans! So last time we started this underdress which was going to be part of my dream running through a castle gown. So today we're just going to get on with the second bit of that to make the overdress and then complete the whole outfit. And so I'm really excited for today's video and I hope that you do sit back and enjoy. So we're not going to waste any time and we're just going to get right into that. So unfortunately for today's story time, we're going to have to keep it a little short just so I can fully explain what's going on in this video simply because it's a large project and I want this video to make sense as well as make sense of the last video if that didn't make that much sense. But today's story time is basically that one time that I went to Ballarat and almost died there. I know quite dramatic but well in all honesty the situation was so tense and dramatic for what it was so basically uh me my family and a couple of family friends so in total there was like three four families there at the same time so all of us we were waiting in line to go into this underground mine tour thing at Ballarat Sovereign Hill and we're just waiting in line but it was a really really hot day that day and there was next to no wind where we were so we were just being baked in the sun like waiting for this line to go inside it's so hot and we're so thirsty and we only have one water bottle one water bottle between what i would say like 20 of us so from the outside it's basically just 20 people waiting in a line to go into some tour thing and it doesn't sound that bad but honestly we had that one water bottle it was what like probably this was actually early in the morning uh actually not that early in the morning it was probably nearing midday at this point to be fair this was like a couple years ago now so i don't really remember times exactly but maybe this was around 11 11 30 a.m considering that we did have to drive to Ballarat first and then we had a brunch there. So I would say it was around that time. So it was getting quite hot, probably around 30, 32 degrees. And it's just a windless day. We have that one water bottle and we are all so thirsty. So what we did was we all took one sip of the water and then the water bottle was finished. Luckily, there was a water pump, literally like what? 20 meters from where we were and while 20 meters doesn't sound that bad it was a it was an uphill climb so it was pretty bad when one person had to climb all that way in the heat while only having had one sip of water in the past five minutes i know that sounds a bit dramatic but they would go up they would fill the water bottle they would bring it back and it would be empty again in the next five minutes Actually, I think five minutes is giving it too much credit. Like pretty much the second they came back, one person would take one sip and then they would pass it around all 20 people and then it would be finished again. So this was awful, but eventually I would say maybe like 15 minutes later, we were inside the actual mine thing and it was so much better there because the mine is obviously underground. And the rest of the day was honestly fine. It was a hot day, but other than that spot, especially when we were continuously moving, it honestly wasn't that bad and we weren't dying of thirst every time we took a step. But that like 15 minutes of pure Australian summer heat hell was pretty bad and it's kind of ingrained in our memories now. But that is it for today's story time and really the only reason that i have this story is because one it is summer right now as of filming this and it is a very hot day today and it's actually a really hot week this week which is surprising for melbourne standards because by this point we usually have one day that it's really cold but we haven't had that so that is the end of the story time and we're just going to get into the actual making of this dress so first I cut out my skirt and basically the skirt wasn't much. All I did was I cut out my waist measurement and then I just made an angle from the waist measurement to the entire length of the fabric that I had. And I just cut out that skirt and then I sewed it together like a skirt. And then the next bit was this top portion. And now with this, 
I wasn't entirely sure what fabric I was going to make it out of because I wasn't sure that the fabric that I used for the skirt portion would actually last enough to make a top out of, but apparently it did last, and so I cut out the top from this anyways. But the problem with this is that you could see in a previous clip that when I laid out my pattern on top of it, the very edge of the center back piece didn't actually fit the fabric exactly like there was a little chunk of fabric missing and that will come up later but for now i just grabbed that fabric and then i stitched it together i stitched the center fronts together and then i stitched the sides together And that's when we ran into a bit of a problem. So this is my side seam, and this is my f center front seam. And as you can see, they're not on the same side. So one of them is inside out when I turn the top the right way up. So that was a bit unfortunate, but I got to picking out the threads. Now this was a really stressful situation because this is such a delicate fabric that I was so scared that I was going to accidentally end up ripping it while taking out the threads. Luckily, that did not happen, but it did not stop me worrying. And also every single decision that I took at this step was entirely dictated by the fact that this was a practically $13 piece of fabric for just this little bit. So it was really expensive for what I had. Then I took out my trusty big bishop sleeved, well it's not really a bishop sleeve, it's more of a bell sleeve, fabric and the pattern. And so this is the fabric that I got and this is actually curtain fabric and I found this on clearance at Spotlight. I went in there one day and I basically emptied out their clearance folder because this fabric, all of that fabric together only cost me like less than $2 and I thought it went really well with my actual really expensive fabric. So it worked out well for me that I also got extra fabric that I knew I was going to need for the sleeves because when I ordered the expensive fabric, like the actual fabric with the dots and stuff, I knew it was not going to be enough for everything that I needed, especially the sleeves because I wanted them to be extra big and poofy. So I'm so glad that I found this fabric there because it's just perfect. It, blends in right with the other fabric and it's also the translucent dreamy feel that I wanted it to be so I just stitched that up. Now I wanted to complete the sleeves first and I wanted the cuffs of the sleeves to be ended with this lace. So I just measured out my lace and then I doubled that measurement so that the lace was a little bit thicker and it wasn't really that translucent. So I made it like this and then I just cut it out and then I gathered the sleeve up and I attached it to this and then I just sewed that together. That's pretty straightforward and it doesn't need that much explaining.
next bit was just simple, just uh, sew the top part of the sleeve onto the actual bodice bit. And while most people hate this bit because it is a little bit difficult, I'm honestly starting to enjoy it, so... I don't know, does that like make me quirky or something? But you know, yeah, I just did that. So this is what I had so far and honestly looking at this it looks pretty good. I was super happy with it at this point. The sleeves looked amazing and the sheer top was like oof and I was really happy and so I went on to the next step. At first I wasn't entirely sure how I wanted to do the closures on this and all I knew was that I wanted to do the closures on the back and that I did not want to use a zipper for this thin and honestly quite flimsy fabric which honestly would not even hold up a zipper because you would be able to see the zipper from a mile away so i did some thinking and at first i thought maybe i was going to do buttons but feather revelations have allowed me to find these again so i feel like maybe i'm going to do three snap fasteners down and then just close off the rest or maybe i'll do snap fasteners down all the way but I'm going to use these and maybe since when they are on here, you'll be able to see them because it's see-through, obviously. I thought maybe I might put like buttons or something on top of it just to make it look a little bit nicer and neater. But I'm not entirely sure yet, so we'll just see how this is going. So I've spent a while now and I've just added in three snap fasteners on this way down. And I'm probably just going to stitch this end bit closed underneath the snap fasteners. And then I'll probably move on to stitching the skirt piece to this piece. And then I'll work out something about these weird cutout situations here. so fitting check and this looks brilliant so far i really love the way it fits i have not finished the collar yet and i need to go ahead and do that but from the back i have done this middle bit i still have to like iron it down kneading it up and all but it fits really well so i'm happy with that i really need to sort out this cutout situation i'm not entirely sure how to do that yet but eh, we'll work through it so this is me attaching the skirt portion and the bodice portion together so that it can finally start coming together as a bigger piece. Now the collar and neckline was one of the things that I struggled most with because in my reference picture it was the thing that I was least gravitating towards. I did not want a neckline like that at all but I liked the ruffly bits so at first I was really confused. I wasn't even sure what shape to start off with but I figured since I did my underdress in that particular shape I was just going to do a rounded collar so I just followed the exact same pattern and I just decided to ruffle it up at the neck. So first I tried this ruffling technique and eventually I just ended up going through the lace and basically I put it in every fourth hole. So this honestly matters on the size of your lace. My lace every fourth hole was like the perfect amount of gathering for my collar. So I sewed that together. And 
this idea was a little bit spontaneous, but basically I grabbed these large rectangles and I made them pretty long. I think I took it up to about five meters. And then I gathered it down and attached it to one of my petticoat layers that I kind of made in the last video. I didn't really shed that much light on it because it was honestly such a simple process. I just made two little skirts by attaching rectangles together, added a gathering at the top, and for one of them I decided to add these little ruffles at the bottom. So I like the way that it turned out in the end, I just needed my petticoat to be a little bit longer. But yeah, spontaneous idea, worked. Now last bit was really only to add the lace at the bottom of the skirt and I decided that I didn't really want this gathered so I just sewed that on and it was done. Now I just had to put the ensemble together. I hope that you're having a good day. I hope that you continue to have a good day and I will see you next time.